What does a century, a centipede, and a centimeter all have in common? Let's find out. Well, if you look at all three of those words and you said they all start with the prefix cent, you're correct. Now the question is, well, what does cent mean? Well, let's think of first century. Well, a century is a hundred years. A centipede, now a centipede literally means a hundred feet. However, I hate to break it to you, they don't all have a hundred feet. Uh, and then finally, a centimeter, well, we know there's a hundred centimeters in a meter. So if you notice, they all have the number 100 in them and cent means a hundred. So naturally that brings us to percent, which is what we're studying today. Well, percent literally means per 100. Pretty simple. And the definition is just a part to whole ratio where the whole is 100. Now that we know what percent means, let's try some examples. All right, let's get going. So example one, write the percent as a fraction or mixed number in simplest form. <clears throat> so for A, we've got 40%. That's the percent symbol if you haven't seen it before. And now that we know that percent literally means per 100, 40%, if we're gonna write it like a fraction, would then be 40 over 100. Pretty simple. But now we have to remember to simplify. So we could obviously divide both by 10, uh, but 20 is actually the greatest common factor. So if I divide the numerator and denominator by 20, I get 2 fifths. So 40% is equivalent to two fifths. All right, let's try B. 4.2%, same thing, 4.2 over 100. We don't really want a decimal in the fraction, so the first thing I'm gonna do is multiply the numerator and denominator by 10 to get rid of the decimal point. So times 10 times 10, and I get 42 over 1,000. And now I just need to simplify that fraction. So 42 over 100, divide the numerator and denominator by two. They're both even numbers and I get 21 over 500. And last one, C, 165%. Now, <clears throat> these first two were less than 100%, which is why we got proper fractions for both. 165% is greater than 100%, so we would expect to be getting a mixed number for the last one, C. So here we go, same thing as we've done the first two, 165%, so 165 over 100. We've got an improper fraction, which is what we expected, so now I can either simplify first and then change it to a mixed number, or change it to a mixed number and then simplify. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I think I'm gonna simplify first. So let's try to divide the numerator and denominator by five. So 165 divided by five, let's see, 30 would be 150. So 33 over uh, 20. We've got an improper fraction still, so last step, let's change that into a mixed number. 20 goes into 33 one full time, and I have 13 over 20 left over. And that makes sense because again, this was greater than 100%, so we should be getting something greater than one. Here's a few to try on your own. Now we're going the other way. We're starting with fractions and mixed numbers and we're changing them into equivalent percents. So, three tenths. Well, to make it a percent, we know that that fraction needs to be over 100. So we need to get an equivalent fraction that has a denominator of 100. Here it's pretty simple. Multiply by 10. If I do that to the denominator though, I have to do the same to the numerator or else it won't be equivalent. So times 10 in the numerator, and we get 30 over 100, which means 3 tenths is equal to 30%. Here we go. Let's try the next one. So 3 fourths, same idea. I want to get the denominator to become 100. 
Well, how do we get from 4 to 100? Times 25. So times 25 in the denominator, same thing in the numerator, and we get 75 over 100, which as a percent is 75%. And to be honest, the fourths are ones you want to have memorized because they come up all the time. One fourth is 25%, two fourths is a half, which is 50%, three fourths, 75%, four fourths, that's just one, which is 100%. All right, last one. We have a mixed number, one in 17 over 20. So a couple different ways we can do this. We can split it up and say, well, that one whole is 100%. Then just find out what percentage uh, 17 over 20 is and add them together. Or we can change it into an improper fraction first and then find the percent from there. And that's what I'm gonna do. All right, let's first change this into an improper fraction. So 20 times one is 20 plus 17 is 37. Denominator stays the same. And now it's the exact same process as the first two. So we're trying to get the denominator of 100 from 20 to 100. Pretty simple, times five, same to the numerator, and 37 times five, well, 30 times five is 150. Seven times five is 35, add them together, 150 and 35 is 185. Which means one in 17 over 20 is equal to 185%. Now, does that make sense? it's greater than 100%. And yes, it does, because remember, we started with a mixed number, which is greater than one. In conclusion, the number one is equal to 100%, like we said before. If you have a proper fraction that's less than one, you're gonna get a percent that's less than 100%. If you have an improper fraction or a mixed number that's greater than one, which it has to be, then that means you should be getting a percent that's greater than 100%. Hopefully that makes sense. And here's a few more to try on your own. All right, and for today's video, I wanted to shout out some of my old students. So, Dianita, Bella, Siobhan, Oakley, Jeffrey, and Iran, and everybody else from ISM that might be watching. Thank you so much for all your support and reaching out and all the comments. Hope you guys are doing well. Go Bearcats.